describing something that looks like water, uh, is a Farm to Table alumni and a dear friend. So please get really quickly. This is not his real name, but this is the name he prefers to go by. <laughs> so kind of like the artist formerly known as Prince or something like that. He's not a symbol. He is a symbol. Total sex symbol. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, woo. I like that you were the only one that said woo for that. <laughs> you and your dad were the only ones that said woo for that. Not sure how I feel about that, but I like it. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Topher Mauer. so it's time for the last person. <laughs> We'd just keep bringing them out if we had more alcohol back there, I think. But nope, time to hit the bar, so. Uh, anyway, it is uh, Halloween time. Anybody have any little trick-or-treaters out there? Ready to go on Monday? Yeah. You got one? You got their costumes? Yeah. Ready to go? Still uh, able to afford rent? No. And everything? <laughs> no? Yeah. <laughs> Great. Costumes are freaking expensive, man. The only reason that I actually put up with it anymore is because it's the only way that a 41-year-old guy like myself can get myself a giant stash of candy. Like, I mean, I could go to the store and buy myself a bag but and tell everybody it's for the little kids that are coming come to my door that let's be honest, anything I buy before the 31st, that's not making it to Halloween. <laughs> it's lucky to make it to my car. <laughs> I get home from the store and get a hook up an IV of insulin. So, you know, they know they, they know it's for me. Everybody at the store knows that I don't want to look like a glutton, so I'm going to be an adult, do the responsible thing, and steal candy from my children. <laughs> so, got to buy in costumes. So we're at the Halloween store. My youngest kid says he wants to be a stormtrooper. That's adorable, little stormtrooper. Let me get you the outfit, and oh my god! I don't think actual stormtroopers paid this much for their outfits. I mean, I'm sure those things were government issued, but you know the emperor didn't pay that much for these things. That guy, he's the kind of guy that you know always goes with the lowest bidder. That's why his battle stations are so easy to blow up. <laughs> My next kid said he wants to be a Jedi. I'm like, oh, that won't be too bad. I just gotta buy a robe. And Jesus Christ! <laughs> Did the Jedi parents have this problem? This, <laughs> sending their little Padawans off to school? Are they bragging to their friends? They're like, you know, we're so proud of little Obi. He made the Jedi Academy, but oh my god, the money we had to spend on robes. <laughs> and it couldn't just be any robe. We had to go to the Jedi bookstore. <laughs> That's where they get ya. Do you think Superman had this problem when he bought his super suit? I mean, because that's a nice suit. It had to be really expensive, and he's just on a reporter's salary. He was in the super. I imagine him in the costume store, and he's like, you know, I know I'm Superman and all, but I do have to live in Metropolis. Rent is ridiculous. So I decided to send my kids just out as elementary school students this year. <laughs> I told them if anybody asked who they are, they should just pick a classmate. <laughs> so I have been trying to take better care of myself. I've uh, lost a little bit of weight this year. And, uh, oh, wow, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, what happened was, I mean, I realized when I was younger, my body was prepared for all sorts of physical activity. I was ready to go with anything, and lately, a bomb of my body is only prepared for sleep. <laughs> so I started jogging. Now, jogging, for those of you that don't know, is a form of torture <laughs> that some of us put ourselves through in order to try to, to get fit and lose weight. 
And for me, the weird thing is it's not immediately torture because like you start jogging and for a little while you feel great. My brain is in complete control. I'm like, I'm gonna be healthy, I'm gonna be skinny. In no way will I regret doing this. Until a few minutes, then my body is like, what the fuck? Is there a fire or something? Toph, did you steal food again? <laughs> so my brain and body have this little conversation, and my brain's like, don't worry, body, it's good. And my body says, nothing about this is good! <laughs> my brain says, you're gonna have to trust me. And my body says, no! <laughs> my brain doesn't know is that my body is playing the long game. Because in half an hour, what my body knows is that I'm going to break down until I'm just a gelatinous mass of sweat and pain. Like, I no longer have the nice, healthy gait. This is my nice, healthy gait. I no longer have the nice, healthy gait. More like a drunk C-3PO. <laughs> Panting like every breath is going to be my last and pray to God that it will be. Sweat is pouring off of me like a spigot. I leave a trail behind me like I'm a human snail. <laughs> I get home and I collapse on my front lawn and my brain concedes, you're right, buddy, I'm so sorry. This is the worst thing in the history of mankind. <sighs> now, I know that there's some of you out there who are looking at me and being like, Tove, come on, running is fun. <laughs> You're the same smug bastards I know that like to talk to me about runner's high. <laughs> Which I can tell you is a total myth because the only thing I ever feel are runner's suicidal thoughts. <laughs> These are the people that put those 26.2 stickers on their car, you know, to let everybody know that they've run a marathon. I need a .1 sticker. <laughs> Maybe a sticker with just like so a flight of stairs <laughs> and a corpse on top. <laughs> <laughs> but I keep doing it because the truth of the matter is this year I also got divorced and I had to start dating again, so I wanted to look good and dating is terrifying, so I tried to put my bill self forward because the truth is I'm really terrible on first dates. I am. This is the last first date I went on before I get married. I mean, I really shit myself. And I don't mean that figuratively, like the day went poorly. I mean, I really shit myself. Oh, yes, that's right. So let me set the scene for you as I gift you with my little story. Imagine a young Topher sitting in the mall in front of Orange Julius, because I'm a big spender. And I faced that great date conundrum, you know, the one involving gas. And clearly, because it's a first date, the answer is, don't do it! <laughs> Clear to everybody but this guy. Because what this guy thought was, it's a big mall. <laughs> if she even smells anything, I'll just blame that guy. <laughs> and so I did it. I let it out. And I shit myself. <laughs> <laughs> when you shit yourself, that's really all there is to say. It's as bad as you think it is. <laughs> Did you shit yourself, Tover? Yes, I shit myself. <laughs> oh, no. It's exactly like you imagine it. <laughs> and if you think that gas is a dating conundrum, this is no picnic. <laughs> now, an ordinary man would panic. Well, let me tell you, I am an ordinary man. <laughs> because while outside I maintain calm, on the inside I was like, Why, oh my God, did I wear boxer shorts? <laughs> Yes, for those of you that don't know why it's bad, there's no bottom. 
It will fall right out. <laughs> if she's not suspicious now, she will be when I start walking like a duck through the mall. <laughs> well, thanks to the great God that monitors people who shit themselves, I somehow made it to the bathroom and I threw my shit underwear away in the mall trash can. Now, I admit, in terms of reasons to take off your underwear on a first date, it was not best case scenario. <laughs> but the weird thing was, at the end of the day, she did actually still like me, and I remember thinking, I need to shit myself more often. <laughs> this is obviously good luck. But now we're divorced, so as it turns out, shitting yourself is not an omen of good things to come. It means you went to Orange Julius. It did make for a nice line in my online dating profile, like, knows not to shit himself. Learned that one the hard way. So, yeah, dating is great. I did have to make a purchase I hadn't made in a significant amount of time. Yes, that's right, I had to go buy condoms. So, hi, Mom. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I went to Winko because, you know... <laughs> because when you think of condoms... <laughs> Winko. I could have gone to Costco, but to be honest, I wasn't that optimistic. I didn't think I would need like 500. Plus, I'm not entirely sure that condoms are something you trust to Kirkland. So I'm there in the Winko, and I realize there's a lot of choices now. There have been significant advances in condom technology since the last time I made this purchase. So, I mean, and this is just Winko. Winko's like beginner level condom shopping. I can't imagine having gone to the adult store. That's like professional level. They must have like a sales guy there to walk you through it. Which honestly would have been helpful because it's not like you can ask your average Winko employee for help with this particular purchase. It's not like asking to taste a melon. Hey, yo, Robbie, you look like a young man of the world. Have you tried the double ecstasy? So I spent an hour in Winko reading condom boxes. Like, oh, intense. I don't know if I can handle intense. Warming. That looks like it would be fun. Why is it shaped like a baseball bat? 